Alright, back at it. Uh, so I got some new parts. And I think today, I'm waiting on a couple of more seals, but I should have everything today to reassemble the case for my 8-speed transmission. This came out of a wheel horse. And um, I had some seals that I needed to replace. So there's an input seal. And then uh, that goes to the input drive. There's an output seal that goes to the brake shaft that has the cluster gear on it. And then I have to replace a needle bearing, which goes on this intermediate cluster gear because the original was completely shot. I think I showed a video of this, or a snapshot at least, previously, where this is what a new one looks like, this is what the old one looks like. So this one is obviously pretty screwed up. So i got to put those in and um, start reassembling all the gears back into the cases and then put the case back together. Um, I have a new shift fork that should be here by noon. Because this old shift fork is basically toast. It's totally worn out and it's it's seen better days. So I'm gonna I'm gonna toss this and I got a new one that came that I ordered from uh, I think partstree.com uh, Toro replacement. So first things first, I'm going to install this needle bearing and these two seals. And um, you, it's recommended that you use arbors for these, but quite frankly, I don't, I don't do this very often to warrant uh, an investment in a set of driver tools for all the different sizes and configurations of bearings. I do have like a generic um, bearing installation tool, but that's for larger size ball bearings that you'd use for you know automotive applications. This stuff here is, I would say, kind of a little more specialized. And I don't have a lathe. It, you know, if you have a lathe, you can make, you can turn, you can turn something down pretty easy. But I've also, I, I find that, you know, as long as you're a gentleman and you tap it in nice and easy, you can use a, a socket or, you know, to a lesser extent. You know, some soft metal, some soft metal, um, uh, I don't know what you call them, press dies, right? So I'll, I can probably find one of these that'll, that'll get the job done without damaging the bearing. It's a tight fit, but it's not like, it's not so tight that you got to use hydraulics or, or uh, anything like that. So, so with that, um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'll get this case flipped over and get a better camera angle and I'll I'll insert this guy which goes into the uh, into the right hand side of the case right here in this middle position So these are pretty these are pretty foolproof. There's a couple of different sizes based on the transmission you're using, but the input the input shaft has a smaller one, the output shaft is a slightly larger one. And then on the axle shafts, there's two more that go on the axle shaft. So there's a total of I think it's pretty typical on these. There's a total of four penetrations for um, for stub shafts that uh, that get these tiny little lip seals. And these are I mean, these are really, really thin, right? So they're about an eighth inch thick. And they just they just knock in there. The only thing to note is the direction. So there's a, it's a, a clamshell 
lip seal, you want the metal facing out, right? So that way the lip faces in, and that keeps them uh, that keeps them functioning properly to seal out all the uh, the crankcase loop. So this guy is let's see. little small. Let me see what else I got. That'll work. I might take a different tactic on this one. I'm going to press this inside needle bearing out first and see if I can drive it in from the inside because I think this has a little bit of a taper to it. just hit this with a deburring tool. It's got a really sharp edge here on the outside of the case. And let's see, I might switch over to a socket. Look at that, perfect. Nine sixteenths regular walled socket. So I'm not going to drive that all the way down to the bottom. I'm going to use the other bearing to kind of set the depth. And that way it'll keep it from popping out the other side. There's not, uh, there's no steps or lands that are machined into these. They're just through bores. So you can, uh, you can overshoot these pretty easy. Nice and easy, real small taps. Make sure that your needles are rolling freely. We got another good one, all right, so that's that one. And on the back side, we have our seal installed. Cool, seals are done. Uh, next step is, uh, I don't know, maybe an hour or two, I'm supposed to have my shift fork, so then I can start putting all this stuff back together. Right, and the last seal I have to install is uh, is the one that goes on the opposite side of the case. So this is the left-hand side of the case, and that's for the brake, the shaft for the brake drum. So this pops through, and it's got another piece on the outside. There's actually a casting feature here for a brake band uh, that sits in here. So um, so this one's actually a lot easier to install. I can do this one from the outside just like that. Alright, seals are done. Time to chug some beers while I wait for my shift fork to show up in the mail. Ok, 
Okay, so the first thing that goes in will be the high-low shift selector bracket. And before I get in here too, too far, give it a quick blow of air. Just to make sure if there's any dirt or particles in there, like pieces of metal, whatever. Get all that stuff out. So the high-low selector goes in first. And that just pokes right through a hole in the casting at the top that's unsealed. Slides in there like that. That gives you an idea how much motion this has. It's very, very small. Right? So that'll go in first and then next is a cluster here. That goes in under the shift rail. And this is the this is for your high high low selector. And that gets installed with a with a pin. So that goes flush. That pin sets flush with the outside of the case. There's a through hole on the other side. And then there's like a chamfered edge. I just kind of get it down to where you're just at the shoulder of that, the base of the chamfer. And that should set the height of that. It does move up and down quite a bit. That's normal. All right. And then next uh, we'll do the, the high-low selector fork. That would go in next. And the shift rails, which are pretty tricky. The way these shift rails go in, there's a double D pin that goes in these bores. Now inside this bore, it might be difficult to see, but there is a there's a little piece of rod and a spring. There's a spring spring loaded feature with a rod on the inside, a solid rod, like a hard stop. And then on the end of both of these is a very very small ball bearing now there's a hole on the opposite side of the case over here that you'd have to it's plugged you'd have to drill that out and maybe tap it for a set screw or something but the way this works I think from from the manuals perspective is you would put the uh, put the rear shift rail in insert the ball, insert the spring, insert the rod, and then from the front side you would try to very precariously insert the ball here and then push it in with like an Allen head wrench or something. Push it in so you, it allows you to, to install the, the other shift rod without that, that ball escaping. So that the trick here is you got to get a ball trapped between in compression between two solid surfaces. All right, so I removed the paint from this new part uh, just because this basically is a metal on metal surface. Okay, the way it works is it runs on runs in this little groove that's on the back of the gear, and uh, all that paint's just going to wipe off and end up in your transfer case anyways um, so the idea here is I want to make sure that this is just a nice fit nice and clean so I think we got a winner so I'll, um, next step is I'm, I'm gonna go get the springs go dig up the springs in the, in the check ball for this guy and find my little shifter shaft so we can assemble the fork the uh, high low fork assembly
with a vice grip on the, the shifter fork. This gives you an example of how this, this moves up and down. So the, the fork is actually oriented in a way where the, the spring tube points down. And this is not concentric with the gear cluster at this point, but it shows you the detents, low and high, right?
Seriously?
then my shift rail, my regular gear shift select. Gearing, right? So it's like one reverse, two and three, I believe is the gear pattern here. All right, so there's one, there's reverse, two and three. It's like butter.